Kyle here from GBHBL.com here at Bloodstock 2021 with Onslaught. Guys, first things first, how's your day going? Hectic. Hectic? Even though you're not playing to this evening, you're well, still crazy busy. <laughs> My head is hectic. So. <laughs> what time did you get here? Uh, about 1.30, but it's been really chilled for me. Was, uh, yeah? Not really. Nice. <laughs> What's been keeping you busy? It's brain. Yeah, my brain. <laughs> my first game. <laughs> first one. First show for pro proper show yes. for Onslaught as the official lead vocalist yeah. after the album. No, so he's uh, <laughs> yeah. excited. Just all, all the emotions rolled into one at the minute, pretty much. Well, obviously, guys, we can't not talk about what's been keeping things back for so so very long. How have you guys been coping throughout the last, well, let's say, eighteen months or so? wine and then went over to gin <laughs> then uh yeah kind of like that <laughs> i guess i guess we were lucky because we decided to release the album last august mm. within the pandemic so we were we were kind of recording for the first six months of it you know and it kind of kept us focused on what we were doing yeah a lot of bands decided not to release their albums at that time so we just sort of decided to put it out there and see how everything went really and bear, you know, released it in August, I presume those early first couple of months, it was kind of just constantly watching and waiting and hoping, OK, we're going to be able to get out and tour this thing eventually. Yeah, well, we, we thought November we're going to be back on the road and it's all going to be cushy like. <laughs> Not quite that simple. I mean, we had four, four tours cancelled, countless festivals and a game the following on till now. It's been, yeah. So, so it's, it's not been good eventually, but I mean, the album went great. And that was a, a big plus to do it in in the pandemic, I think. Do you think there's any benefit then that might have come from the fact that effectively people were stuck at home, that that might have helped, or is it, are you just unsure? It certainly did for the exposure for the album, I think, because people were just listening to new music and, and like I said, it, it went amazingly well, the album, all over the world. So it was great in that effect, but we've obviously lost the knock-on effects of touring and stuff. So. But the album, uh, the, the label has said they're going to relaunch the album when, once the tour dates start properly again, which is nice, with another video and relaunch the album and some other product, which is going to be very interesting as well. Okay, so, okay. It and could all end up very good for us. Is this kind of cathartic then? Because, I mean, obviously it's Bloodstock. It's you're the, effectively the first headliner of the entire weekend. Yeah, I mean, I, as far as I see, it's going to be the first headliner of the first real metal festival in the UK. Because like. mm. obviously Download was a bit, you know, it wasn't really a metal festival like this is. So yeah. so it's nice to be the first band to headline the real metal festival, you know? Yeah. So it's gonna be very cool. And I think people are really chomping for this tonight. Like, yeah, I think, um, like you said, with the album, like people, ch some bands chose not to release their album, some bands did. Um, like Nigel said, like everybody was trying to find new music, man, right? because they had nothing else to do, right? So, and I think, now, as the shows are going to come back, I think shows are going to be even more incredible than what they were before the pandemic, just from people are going to be hungry for it. You know, like, people want to get back to shows. Maybe they took it for the granted at some point, and, like, now everyone's going to be like, we need to go to live shows. I mm. think live music is going to take off even more than what it was before, you know? like. So you're not even considering, I guess, the whole, we took it for granted, we lost it, and now we have it coming back? Yeah. Okay, okay. I think, it's going to be, I think shows from for the next couple of years are going to be absolutely insane. It, if, for me, it, today, because we've been living in, everyone's been living in a little bubble really for the past 18 months and, and now when they lift the restrictions you've still got people out, you know, out, of the, out of the arena that you know, they're still wearing masks and there's people that aren't wearing masks and they're still like, but as soon as we got, I got here today, it just feels like it's, you know, it's never happened. It just feels yeah, like yeah. bloodstock today. It's, it's right. like everyone's here for the same reason, so... Yeah, like you know, I, I attend Bloodstock if I'm not playing it, so it's just, just it just feels normal today. Those you know, two years just, have just kind of flown by, right? Well, they haven't flown by, <laughs> but now it's here, it yeah. feels really good, and it feels like, you know, let's get things back up and rolling again. And, and are you guys planning to sort of stay around all weekend? Um, not me personally, unfortunately, I have to head back tonight, but um, I think these, yeah, guys, are, for a few days, these yeah. guys are sticking around. Yeah. Well, you guys are sticking around then. Who are you kind of hoping to check out this weekend? Dead in Time's End. There it is. Creator. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing you, Vile. Um, our friends Anakim, who are opening the uh, the Sophie stage tonight. Yeah. 
um, just anyone I can get around to seeing really. Yeah, because it's a pretty packed lineup. Yeah. Yeah, it's always just finding the right, you know, making sure that no one clashes, go and see a bit of them, go and see a bit of them and just, you know, share the love around the bands and, you know, everyone's in the same boat. All the bands need support, you know, so. And personally then, like, what does Bloodstock mean to you guys individually? Uh, personally, for me, they've, you know, they've done a lot for us in previous bands as well and they're really supportive, like, the, te the Bloodstock team are a really supportive bunch of people. Um, I think they've been brilliant keeping not just the bands but the fans really in the loop of what's going on um, and you know any changes any slight changes in you know whether it's Covid restrictions or lineup changes or if anything's going to change they've just been bang on the, mm. on the, on the button with it and it, you know everyone's everyone knows what's going on so that everyone's just coming and yeah they, they... you guys got anything to add there about Bloodstock? Me, me and Dave have been coming since we were kids, like when it was indoors, oh. like in, in Derby City Centre, you know. Um, like I think the first time we came was the Children of Bowden. 2003, I think yeah, that was. Yeah, yeah. Like that. first Gamma one. Ray, maybe. Gamma <laughs> Ray, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah I've seen side. the poster, I was a bit young for that. Uh, yeah, I think Oxford <laughs> played that, possibly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, this is our yeah. fifth time now. Yeah. So they're, they're always very supportive of us, you know, yeah. so, which, which is amazing. So. Yeah, coming from, like, coming from like being a punter at those early shows to like, then coming to like one of some of the first times it was in a field to like then playing like you know the real small stage when it was back in like a little white tent like this mm. and then we're kind of like just moving through the different stages now and it's, it's crazy like to go from you know something you grew up coming to to actually like being able to play is, is, is unreal. So we sort of evolved as humans with the evolution of bloodstock really yeah, yeah, so yeah. we've seen it we've seen the festival grow it you know. It's to growing up with it, yes, basically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it seems obvious as well, guys. Like at this stage, you don't get nervous anymore, do you? I, I do have some free <laughs> gig nerves. Oh, I'm looking at yeah. you, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, there's pyrotechnics. There's, you know, when I got like Jeff, the bass player, going, "Oh, this is the biggest shit one slot's ever done." It's like no pressure, Dave. You know, but as soon as I hit the stage and the adrenaline kicks in, it's go time. It's, yeah, that's know. good, man. Lastly, guys, then last thing you've already mentioned the the drive to push the new out the new album again is there anything else in the works or are you hoping that will work out throughout 2021 provided everything stays as it should yeah we got some like i said if uh, we get a relaunch on the album um new video um and there is another product which i don't want to disclose it's going to come out it's going to be quite interesting especially to the uh the older fans of the bands maybe okay um, which i think is going to be very cool um personally um, so, fingers crossed that's going to kind of go in conjunction with the touring, um, just to push the little profile again. Yeah, well yeah, it's needed of course as yeah, well, because so everyone's in the same boat. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, hopefully next year in particular will be a big big boost again. I think that we're, we're not going to be too busy this year, we got, I think we've got um, Underworld next week, Underworld mm. next week and Damnation, Damnation Festival. Festival, that's probably going to be the limit for this year unless anything else comes in, but next year's um, looking real good. It's better than nothing, right? right. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. considering yeah. The, the rehearsals that we've had so far, we've, you know, the final one was on Sunday, it was, felt good, felt ready, so it was, you know, because we couldn't see each other. We didn't we, we didn't see each other for the best part of a year, did yeah, we? Yeah, really, wow. that was, all of us um, weren't in the same room for yeah. a year. I mean, that, when that they really eased the restrictions first, we did the clowns video, didn't we? But that yeah. was all socially distanced, we couldn't be in the same room at the same time, and that's, the outcome of that video is because of the pandemic, really. Yeah. You know, it, it tied up really well, and the, the video looks awesome. But you know, it was like we had to go in and do our part separately because we were we were abiding by the rules. So, but then it just it just crunched down more more rules. Like, so we're lucky to have got that out really. Yeah, we? yeah, yeah. You it know, it's, we really cut it fine with, yeah. with getting the vocals done. It yeah, was, we've got a few um, rules there. <laughs> yeah, but we had but to. We had to. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on GBHBell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash GBHBL as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you like this video, do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal. What else is life for?